Hello friends, how are you? I'm Dr. Sharif Halim and I'm here to talk about mitral stenosis today. Okay, so mitral stenosis is a very important disease. So I should say the most important valvular disease that you should know everything about is mitral stenosis. And apart from mitral stenosis, our, uh, mitral st regurgitation is also important, but not as that uh, like of mitral stenosis. So know everything. And uh, why we should study mitral stenosis from the answer should be you should study mitral stenosis from uh, Davidson and also you should get a better idea uh, especially in the clinical examination part from the Abdul Nasser's book so the short cases and also the long cases so they will provide you the basic outline of the mitral stenosis so let's talk a brief in a brief about mitral stenosis so a patient of mitral stenosis may present like that that they had a history of uh, uh, rheumatic, uh, fe rheumatic fever in the child presenting as some joint swelling and joint pain uh, which lasted for some time and the swelling uh, involved first one joint then moved on to other joint then moved on to other joint so migratory polyarthritis and also they had the features of chest pain palpitations or something like that so this will be a typical history in the past in their young age and now they develops fatigue fatigue palpitation maybe some chest pain in some few cases and in severe cases the patient may present as a case of right heart failure because you see when there is mitral stenosis the mitral valve is stenosis so mitral valve sits in between the atri left atrium and the left ventricle so the left atrium pumps the blood or i should say that uh, takes the blood from the pulmonary veins and then uh, let it go to the left ventricle so if the mitral valve is stenosed, the left atrium cannot actually fill the left ventricle and the left ventricle, left ventricle is actually has less blood and the blood actually backs up in the left atrium. So the gradually the left atrial the volume will be increased, the left atrium will be dilated and there will be increased pressure in left atrium which will be transmitted to the pulmonary circulation and ultimately this pressure uh, will be transmitted to right ventricle. So right ventricle will have to pump against um, more resistance that it did before and that's why the right ventricle will get hypertrophied uh, after some time and this hypertrophy will ultimately eventually result in right ventricular failure. So a mitral stenosis patients in sometimes can patient present with right ventricular failure and the features would be like he'll be have he or she will have a, a distended vein, uh, neck veins so distended pulse and leg veins and also an enlarged and tender liver and uh, dependent edema in the legs or maybe in the buttock. Okay, so those are the common features that mitral stenosis patients may present and the patients that are more likely to present are if a patient is woman a female in her reproductive age having a baby uh, he uh, or she uh, if, if he or she is pregnant uh, it's more likely to present at that time because during pregnancy the patients have a huge volume of a load in their body because they retain fluid and also there is hemodilation so heart has to work more uh, because the volume the cardiac output is more so the, uh, the amount of work is more and that's why the uh, the amount of disability is also more so the mitral stenosis patient may present in, in case of pregnancy and it's also true for mitral vegetation so these are the presentations common presentations of the mitral stenosis patient so when a patient comes with uh, such kind of symptoms or when such a simple patient comes you all start by asking uh, the histories and also ne next examine the patient and you start the examination with checking the pulse so when you check the pulse in a patient of mitral stenosis you have two main, main important features so we can have a low volume pulse or you can have a pulse which is irregularly irregular uh, because in case of mitral stenosis uh, the thing is that the left vent atrium gets dilated slowly and this, this this produces stress in the left atrial wall which can actually uh, eventually develop into atrial fibrillation and this fibrillation will be presented as a irregularly irregular high pulse in in case in case of pulse examination so next you see the neck, vein, neck, neck veins. So neck veins may be engorged or dilated if there, there is a right ventricular failure or right heart failure. Okay. So next uh, look in the precordium. So in precordium when you inspect there is nothing not much findings in case of mitral stenosis and when you start to palpate the apex beat is normal in the normal location and the, uh, and the characteristic of apex beat should be tapping. It's a clinical term actually I never had that feel that much 
because the material services murmur uh, is, is not that much and uh, 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 tapping is, is a character of the apex beat actually so uh, it's not present always or uh, it's just a thing that you should remember uh, not not that much clinically important but the more important is you can have a thrill which is a diastolic thrill uh, but uh, that's that thrill also is not that uh, big enough to identify for especially undergraduates okay next is if you auscultate the heart uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, one thing one more thing if the patient has right ventricular failure or right ventricular hypertrophy what you will have is you will have the uh, epigastric pulsation because the right ventricle uh, have uh, if, if there is right ventricular hypertrophy it will present as epigastric hypertension epigastric pulsation and also uh, right pastoral heap and you can have palpable p2 because there is increase in pressure increase in pressure which can lead to a problem in the pulmonic valves okay next is uh, auscultation so why do you auscultate the patient with mitral stenosis first you auscultate in the standard position with the diaphragm but to have the to have a better understanding of the mitral stenosis murmur it's best to have the patient in a left left lateral position and breath hold after expiration and check or examine the apex i mean the mitral area with the bell of the stethoscope after breath holding of expression breath holding after expression and now what you will see is the fast heart sound will be ha rough or ha fast heart sound will be loud because the fast heart sound as you know the fast heart sound is produced by the closure of the mitral valve so uh, consider that uh, if a if a uh, if a wa if a door is made up of steel if it closes uh, it, it will produce more sound if uh, uh, in comparison to a door which is made up of wood steel is harder and rougher so it will produce more sound so when faster sound is produced in a normal patient it's it's okay love and then in case of a metastasis patient the fast heart sound will be loud and louder louder than normal patient because it will close or shut off and produce sound because it is rough and it is hard okay next is you will have the murmur and the murmur will be a diastolic murmur and preferably a mid diastolic murmur but before hearing the murmur you can have an opening snap opening snap and uh, it's not always present but you can have an opening snap uh, when the left atrial bud uh, actually pushes the mitral valve to open and this push produces a snap snap open the mitral valve snaps open that produces an opening snap and then the left atrial blood actually gushes through a stenosed valve a constricted valve and this gush of blood through a stenosed valve produces a turbulence and which is the mid diastolic murmur and the characteristic that our teachers want to hear is a low pitched localized rough rumbling mid diastolic murmur with opening snap and then followed by presystolic accentuation due to atrial contraction because as you remember uh, in case of a uh, cardiac cycle the uh, the blood from left atrium is pumped in three phases first First, uh, there is a sudden gush of blood due to sudden opening of the mitral valve, then a slow filling, and lastly, the atrial contraction occurs due to atrial systole, and this contraction causes a last rush of blood, which is called last rapid filling, and that's why the presystole accentuation occurs because the atrial systole occurs just before the ventricular systole, and it's about just 0.1 second in duration in comparison to ventricle. Um, ventricle has a systole of about 0.3 seconds. So those are the clinical findings that you should expect in a patient of mitral stenosis. And if you think about investigations, that you should start with a uh, X-ray and ECG and uh, ultimately echocardiogram. But uh, so what are the findings that you should recognize in, in case of X-ray? The patient ha can have the features of pulmonary hypertension, such as engorged vessel and upper loop diversion, or in some cases, curly B lines or something like that. There can be right ventricular hypertrophy and also the left atrial hypertrophy. So if there is left atrial hypertrophy, so left atrial mole is present in the posterior part of the heart, posterior surface, and it can actually present as a double right border because the right border is mainly formed by the right atrium. But when left ventricle, left atrium and largest it comes in the back side of the right atrium and can form a double right border so those are the common findings in the x-ray and also in case of ecg you can have a p mitrally or 
POF which is a, a huge POF because the left atrium is enlarging so electrical activity is high so you will have a huge or large POF so it's called P mitrally and also uh, in case of this echocardiogram you will have uh, you'll see the valve actually you'll see the valve is narrowed the valve is thickened and also the left atrium is dilated and in some cases you will you, you can see the uh, you can see the maybe a thrombus formed inside the left atrium so those are the important feature uh, important findings in, in investigations so if about treatment in case of metastenosis patient if the if the stenosis is not that severe you can take the patient you can give the patient drugs if the stenosis is moderate uh, you can do the mitral valve commissurotomy and if the, if the stenosis is very severe you have to actually replace the valves so the mitral valve replacement so that's all from me about mitral stenosis uh, I, th I think it will help you to understand the concepts and actually clinically see the patient and interpret the things that i have said and if you have any queries i, I think you will have some queries uh, please don't be don't feel shy to comment and ask me and i'll try to answer those questions and please uh, like the like my channel and subscribe to it thank you for watching the video